I love rotting in bed during summer break. No homework to do, no school to go to. What could possibly go- this is less of a review, it's geared specifically towards focusing on student needs, and I'll also be talking about my own experience with this thing, and why it's been a good fit for my student life so far. And if you do want a full review, I made one earlier this year, I'll have it linked in the description below and also at the end of this video. So, you as a student have a specific set of needs, but how does the M1 MacBook Air fulfill these needs exactly? So let's first talk about what these needs might look like. What does every student want in a computer? Well, the computer is probably the most important and most used tool you as a student have, so it's crucial that it's durable and reliable with good build quality and battery life. It should probably have a good keyboard for typing up essays and stuff, a thin and light design to carry around the campus with ease, and of course, performance that's enough to carry you through all your student tasks. Before we begin, I want to say that I'm going to try to make this as applicable to as many people as possible, so I won't focus on any specific major or anything. Of course, the air might suit you a little better if you're in one program compared to another, but in general, I think it's a pretty nice, well-rounded little machine. And if you're in high school, I think it's excellent for getting you through your four years. Heck, it got me past grade 11 and 12, and now I'm headed towards university with this thing. Anyways, let's get started. So the most important thing that will probably determine whether or not you'll even get this machine is the price. As students, money is tight, so you're gonna want to get the machine that has the most value you can get out of it. This Mac can be found for like 500 USD used or around 700 USD new. Now, that's still expensive and there are Windows alternatives out there, but they might not offer as much bang for your buck as this MacBook Air might. This is probably the cheapest package that you can get that will fulfill all the needs that I'll be talking about later on. I should note, however, that Apple runs a back to school discount for people going to university and you can get like $200 off their newer machines. So if you're willing to go that route and spend a little more for a much nicer newer machine, that's also an option. And you can also get a gift card if you buy those machines. So that's pretty nice. Apple doesn't sell the M1 MacBook Air anymore, so you won't find it, but you can look at places like Walmart, Best Buy, or other third-party retailers for clearance deals since they're trying to get rid of their old final stock. You can also just go the used route, but be wary of scammers. Say it after me, folks. If it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Now you say it. So the first thing a student needs, durability and reliability. Durability and reliability means good build quality and good battery life. This Mac doesn't disappoint in terms of build quality. The whole thing is aluminum. Keep in mind, this design, while it's old, was premium in 2018 and even 2020. The screen is solid and doesn't bend when opening. You can open the lid with one hand, actually. And that small detail makes the machine quite a nice pleasure to use every time. The keyboard doesn't really have deck flex and the space gray finish is pretty nice. Heck, let's thirst over the hardware of this thing for a bit. It's so thin. It's so light. But genuinely speaking, as a student, this is beneficial to you because it's really not that heavy and it's not that big either. So it's like really easy to slip into a bag that's meant for a normal book. And of course, the screen is gorgeous. PCs are catching up, but the colors on the screen and the overall sharpness of the 2560 by 1600 display are really nice as a student. Whether you're typing stuff, watching lectures, or doing anything student-y, it's definitely gonna be enough for student use. Like from normal viewing distance, you cannot tell the individual pixels apart. It's just that, it's really sharp, it's really nice. And also the viewing angles are real nice too. I do have one complaint though, it doesn't get nearly as bright as I'd like it to. Indoors, it's fine, but outdoors on a sunny day, it leaves a lot to be desired. But hey, if you're buying this for CS or engineering, you won't be going outside anyways, so it all works out. Fun fact, CS actually stands for can't shower. <laughs> Over the two years I've had this machine, I've chucked it around in my bag, treated it like pay pay honestly, and it's taken the beating like a champ. Of course, there's cosmetic damage like the dent here, the love taps from when I dropped the mug on it, the scushes on the bottom, there's also this slight paint chipping from when I was doing a chem lab, and I splashed a bit of hydrochloric acid, or maybe it was sodium hydroxide. So if you're doing chem labs around this computer, be sure to keep it safe. I've also dropped this a couple times from my lap and it's been fine. Despite not recommending it, I eat around my computer and crumbs and even drops of fluid have entered the keyboard before and it still functions perfectly fine. However, the specific type of plastic that Apple uses wears down from finger oils quite quickly, so keep that in mind. And the screen has scratches and you can almost see the marks my palms have left in the palm rest of the machine. But all of this is wear and tear you'd get with any computer that you've had for like two years. The point is, this MacBook has gone through the beatings of life. I've dropped it, gotten water on the trackpad. Disclaimer, no computer is waterproof. Keep water away from your electronics. So overall, I'd say this thing is pretty durable. As for the battery life, it's honestly pretty good. If you're doing basic stuff like word processing, slideshows like in PowerPoint or stuff in Excel or watching lectures, that stuff is gonna sip the battery life and you'll have no problem with lasting a day or two on a single charge. If you're doing more intensive tasks like programming and video editing, 
then there's a lot of variation, but generally you should still be getting a couple hours of use. Keep in mind that if you buy used, the battery will already be somewhat degraded, which means it'll be less effective than it was when it was new. So that'll be something to look out for if you're buying used. But compared to Windows PCs, generally the M1 chip doesn't use much power and it charges pretty fast with the bundled 30 watt charger, which is really small. And you can actually get even smaller 30 watt charger bricks that you can also use to charge your phone. And it uses USB-C, so finding a charger won't be that difficult since you probably have a couple of those plugs lying around anyway. Now we did touch on the keyboard when we talked about durability. Get it? Touch on the key because you touched the key. Never mind. But I am going to go a little more depth here about the keyboard itself. I like this keyboard quite a bit, and one of my favorite features is the backlighting. I spent so many long nights typing stuff out, and the backlighting makes seeing the keyboard so much easier. And honestly, it also just makes it easier to see the keyboard through your tears while you reconsider your life decisions and realize you shouldn't have spent two hours playing Fortnite beforehand. The key travel on the keyboard is pretty nice. I personally like it, and it's also nice and clicky. It's comfortable to type on, and personally, I find the wedge shape of the laptop helps with the comfort factor as well. I've typed so many essays and so many YouTube scripts, including this one, on this Mac, and it's been unproblematic throughout. And I live like a pig. I eat around my computer sometimes, and I've gotten crumbs and other gunk into the keyboard. But overall, the keyboard has held up like a champ, and it's solid overall, it's nice and clicky, one thing that I wish was a bit better were the keyboard shortcuts. Don't get me wrong, the shortcuts themselves are fine and after using Mac for about four years now, I've gotten used to them at this point, it's not a problem anymore. The thing is, most keyboard shortcuts are the same as their Windows counterparts, except you swap control for command log. That's fine, except why would you also have a separate control key in the first place? Like, It's honestly not a huge deal, but it's something Windows users should keep in mind. All right, performance. Oh, this sucks. Wait, why don't we call these things hamsters? They have no like, they have no actual tail. I get wired mice being called mice because like they have tail, like they have the tail, the wire, but this thing doesn't have a tail. So is this just a hamster? Like, come on, let's just call them hamsters. All right, now let's talk about performance. Obviously there's gonna be some concerns with using the computer from four years ago. However, the M1 MacBook Air I find still blazes through most tasks like a champ. Word processing, Excel, web browsing, watching videos and general student tasks weren't great. I'm even able to get some video editing done on this thing. After all, this entire YouTube channel is run on this little machine. I've used this machine personally as a student since grade 11, and it's always been pretty reliable. I can't think of a time it wasn't able to handle the task I threw at it. Hi, University Me here. Um, yeah, I do have a couple problems with this thing. They're not performance related, but now there are some things that I throw at it that I can't handle, mostly just software incompatibility issues. Like I can't run SolidWorks, I can't run Autodesk Inventor on this thing or AutoCAD Inventor, whatever it's called. So I'm gonna need to build my own PC and virtualize at some point, which is kind of a bummer and I'm poor, so I don't really have the money to build a PC, but um, we'll figure it out, it's fine. I'll also touch on this later, by the way, I'll touch on the issue of software compatibility, so don't worry. I was also the media director for some clubs and it was always up to the task. There isn't a fan on this machine, which means it won't be able to run extremely intensive tasks for an extended period of time. But anything you do as a student shouldn't be that demanding anyways. And not having a fan means it's not gonna be loud in class. So while it's a pretty old machine, it's still enough for running all of your student needs. I should note that the model I have specifically has 16 gigs of RAM compared to the standard eight. So if you can find one, get the 16 gig version because it'll be just a bit nicer. It can handle more Chrome tabs and just give your computer more room to stretch. My brother has an 8 gig version though, and he's doing perfectly fine. So it's not an essential upgrade, more of a quality of life one. But especially if you're gonna be doing stuff like video editing or graphic design, or coding, then maybe consider getting the RAM upgrade. Now let's talk about some relevant downsides to buying this machine as a student. So first and foremost, the webcam quality is pretty meh. It wasn't great in 2020, and it certainly hasn't aged like fine wine. <laughs> so it's certainly not the greatest, and this can be a problem if you're doing online school. But this microphone, it sounds it sounds great though, although I, I have this anyways, but right now I'm just using the built-in microphone and it's, it's running fine. And yeah, I guess you can use your iPhone as a webcam, but then how am I supposed to scroll through Instagram Reels when I'm supposed to be paying attention in online class? And this setup is just unnecessarily clunky. Also, if ports were money, this Mac would have more debt than I do. This thing has three measly ports, a headphone jack, and two Type-C ports. That's pathetic. You want your ports? You're gonna need to pay extra for that. Buy a dongle. That's not skibbity, Apple. It's not skibbity at all. So as a poor student in debt, buying this Mac might put you in more debt because you're gonna need to spend more money on these stupid things to buy your ports back. And these things ain't cheap. That's like five Starbucks coffees. Also, Mac OS, while I like it and personally don't find it to be a downside, some of y'all are gonna prefer Windows over the software, which is understandable. We all just have our own preferences. And some software, notably engineering software, is Windows only. For example, SolidWorks is a pretty common one that is not available for Mac OS. That's a bummer. If you're gonna be doing something like that, it'd probably be better to get a Windows PC with a dedicated GPU. Also, last thing that might be considered a downside, 
This is a six-year-old design at this point. Yeah, it's a four-year-old laptop, but this design was first introduced in 2018. Honestly, I see this as a positive, because I like to believe this reduces the chances that my laptop will get stolen, but in reality, it probably doesn't. These don't really care what laptop you got, they're gonna steal it either way. But if you're worried about looking poor and not being cool, well then get a grip, because your self-worth is tied to more than just what computer you have. You are a cool person, whether you're using a MacBook or a Windows machine. As long as it ain't a Chromebook. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Some sort of elephant in the room. Oh yes! As students, it's important to recognize that it's not all about the grind and that we all need our downtime. It's not healthy to be constantly grinding and working until you burn out. We're humans, not machines. And one of the most important things to remember as a student is to maintain a work-life balance through hobbies like socializing, reading, or gaming. That being said, Max are about as good for gaming as living in China. Valorant? Nope. Skyrim? Nope. Not even Fortnite, which used to run on Mac, is compatible anymore because Epic Games is being petty. Hey, Minecraft runs fine on it though. That's something. I am Steve. Shut up! And Leak 2, but if you do play that game, please remember to shower once in a while. And deodorant is like five bucks. If you can afford to get a computer, you can afford deodorant. But I digress. Mac gaming, or rather the lack of it, doesn't bother me too much. I just have my Nintendo Switch with me, so when I want to take a break, I can boot up a game, and many of the games I move to close and reopen when I have time and pick up right where I left off. It's pretty neat. Stay tuned for that review. But yeah, honestly, I find it kind of nice to be able to keep gaming isolated from my work machine, but if you do want to use this thing to game, well, no can do, buddy. But I guess for some, this is an advantage since you won't be able to install any distracting games. Oh, and I forgot to put this in the script, but you can run iOS apps on the Mac. So I can play the iPad version of Geometry Dash or Among Us on this Mac, which is kind of cool. So to recap, the M1 MacBook Air has an outdated screen, a lack of ports, software that may or may not suit you, an older design, and a lack of games. But honestly, those are my only complaints with this machine. This machine is otherwise great for students thanks to its thin and light, durable build, its performance even after 4 years, a wonderful keyboard, and most of all, an incredibly enticing price tag. Honestly, it's like Apple made this computer for us students. It's pretty great, and if this is all your budget allows for, I'd say go for it. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comment section below, I'll try to answer them as best as I can. If they're chemistry related though, you'd have better luck asking a rock. I can't do cap. But yeah, that's it. If you enjoyed this video, then consider subscribing. It's free and it'll probably help me with my university debt. <laughs> And if you want a more general review on this Mac, or you just want to learn more, my full review is in the card up there, and also linked in the description below. Anyways, be awesome, and stay techie.